I used every killer perk on Wesker to see which worked best with his power. I then graded these perks and placed 12 of them into free builds which you can use to help win in your matches. The first build is Bamboozle, Dark Devotion, Call of Brine, and Chlorophobia, paired with Leather Gloves and Loose Crank. This is a well-rounded build and attempts to give Wesker all he needs to succeed on any map. To play this build, make sure you vault DL walls and jungle gyms. It will also allow your virulent bound to vault slightly faster while blocking the window. Overall, Bamboozle can completely block off entire areas for the survivors, and if you incorporate the playstyle I mentioned later, you will find success. Dark Devotion has a lot of value on a killer such as Wesker. With a terror radius of 40 meters, survivors can often hear you coming before you know they are there. Knowledgeable survivors will use this extra warning to walk away from their location with no scratch marks. A way around this will be to use a hit and run strategy on the obsession, using the power of Dark Devotion to catch other survivors off guard. Struggling in chase? Well, this build has you covered. Simply identify a free gen situation and enjoy the Call of Brine's value. Your four minute game will now be at least 11 minutes, making up for the six minute killer queue time. Seriously, why is it so long behavior? In all seriousness, Call of Brine does yield a lot of value, as long as you do one thing, kick the gens, especially with wiretap becoming more prevalent. And finally, Chlorophobia. With Wesker having the biggest terror radius in the game, we should probably make use of it. I can't tell you how many times Chlorophobia has passively given me pressure as they all need to heal slowing the game down, and again, aiding all of Brian. On top of this, with the hit and run aspect of Dark Devotion, a lot of the time, at least one survivor is injured. And in terms of add-ons, I love Leather Glove and Loose Crank, purely for quality of life gameplay. Overall, the build felt very strong, and I hope you agree. Over to build two. Discordance, Hoarder, Hex Plaything, save the best for last, with add-ons being Video Conference Device and Golden Egg. This is a build which is more easy to play, as it outlines the key aspects of Wesker's power and playstyle. So I recommend using this build if you don't trust yourself to make the correct decisions when the game starts running away from you. Discordance allows you to know if more than one person is working on a generator through a loud noise notification, as well as a generator in question showing an aura. Due to Wesker's mobility, you can quickly place pressure on multiple survivors using the knowledge from Discordance. Similar to the theme of aiding you to understand Wesker's ability, Hoarder will show you the notification whenever a survivor interacts with an item. And since first aid sprays are much more common than the comparable Nemesis vaccines, you should see this get more value than usual. Plaything will allow you to be more secretive while hiding your terror radius from affected survivors. This serves as a similar purpose to Dark Devotion in the first build, giving you an advantage in certain loops, as loops will rely more on mind games rather than the survivor waiting for your red light. As well as this, when a totem is broken, you'll be able to pinpoint where the survivor is and use that information for pressure. And finally, a good perk to round off a build like this is Save the Best for Last, as it will allow you to have a shorter cooldown after a successful attack, allowing you to use his ability quicker than usual, possibly catching the survivor off guard as you close the distance. Also, if you are struggling to hit your power due to the tiny hitbox, it can allow you to better play the M1 style of killer with a shorter cooldown. Just be sure to hit your power when it comes to chasing the obsession. And video conference device forces survivors to use sprays more often, encouraging value from Hoarder. As well as this, Golden Egg fits with the idea of this build, making it easier to play, as it gives you a little bit longer to hold onto your second dash before it's on cooldown over to build free. This build is a more snowball-y build, starting you off strong with the intention you can end the game with four or five generators left. Fearmongerer, Barbecue and Chili, Coup de Gras, and Starstruck, with add-ons being Iridescent, Ouroboros Viral, and Ouroboros Virus. Fearmongerer will prevent anyone sprint bursting away from you if they are on a generator. As well as that, the pressure that Wesker has in chases will prevent the survivors from having time to walk to exit their fatigue, preventing exhaustion perks in your chases. Barbecue allows the snowball and is picked here instead of of rage is it will allow you to better keep tempo on the map after a hook. Kudugraha makes up for the lack of Bamboozle here. In the first build, Bamboozle would allow Wesker to vault slightly quicker, catching survivors after vaulting and getting an early hit in chase. Q works the same, although this catch up is mid swing. The only downside here is for Q to begin stacking, the generator will have had to be completed. Finally, Starstruck is there to maximize the huge terror radius of Wesker. It also works with Barbecue, as Barbecue's minimum range at tier 3 is 40 meters. Coincidentally, the size of Wesker's terror radius, and subsequently, Starstruck. Knowing this, you can identify if anyone is around you and whether or not you can get a quick exposed hit on a possible flashlight save attempt D. Finally, I would use these add-ons to apply pressure on survivors from the start and whenever they reach max infection. With that, I hope you try these builds on Wesker and get some 4Ks. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and peace.